What's going on guys? It's Brandon here with Roadrunner Sports and today we're going to be answering one of the most common questions we get online of all time. If you're an overpronator or a runner with flat feet, you're going to want to keep watching this video because in this video we're going to cover the 12 best shoes for runners with flat feet. As always, our team has tested and reviewed all of these shoes, so we're super excited to bring you our list of our favorite shoes that are specific for runners with flat feet. If you want to learn more about any of these shoes, make sure to click the links below in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. The A6 Gel Kayano 27. If you want a stability shoe that gets the job done better than any other shoe, check this one out. I've ran in the 25, the 26, and the 27. And each year, the medial support on this shoe gets a little bit more targeted on the arches and gives you that extra support. Let's take a look at my review from earlier this year and see what I had to say about it. For the Canon 27, overall, you can't do much better if you need a stability shoe. And if you're a neutral runner who's looking for a little bit of stability, but you run on your forefoot, check this shoe out. The medial side of the shoe, we have the Dynamic Duo Max. You can see it's, re it's really stiff here in the, in the, uh, midsole, in the midsole and we have the Trustic system which acts as a medial post but it actually goes across the entire bottom of the shoe as well and then we have a top layer of Flight Foam Propel which is that really squishy technology that really lets you kind of bounce off and spring off the floor. Overall this is a great stability shoe but if you're a neutral runner who just needs a bit of support and you tend to run on your forefoot this shoe can work out perfectly for you as well. The A6 GT 2009. If you need a shoe that has a ton of support, but you're in love with shock absorption and A6 gel, then this is the shoe for you. It's been totally revamped with a one-piece upper that's not gonna give you any hot spots or abrasions. And best of all, the Trustic system that goes around the bottom rolls up to the medial post so you have that additional arch support if you're a flat-footed runner out there. Let's take it to Theo, our fit expert, to see what he had to say about this shoe in his review earlier this year. It's flight foam, you know, all the way through here. Um, but what I noticed is when I first put it on, it's softer than last year's model. So it's slightly more flexible in the toe, but still very, very supportive through the midfoot. And it still has a really good, you know, shock absorption with the gel in the heel. Um, this is a really great shoe. Um, it's for anybody who needs a stability shoe. It's lightweight, um, great for fast paced running, great for racing. Um, GT 2000 V9, um, definitely a good shoe. I would recommend it. Overall, this is a perfect shoe if you need a bit of extra support while you're out running. And as a bonus, there's a trail version of this shoe if you're feeling like hitting the great outdoors. The Nike React Miler. This was one of Runtester Sam's favorite shoes of the year. It has React cushioning and it has a bit of extra support right in the medial post to support your arches. You get a ton of cushion and you get responsiveness from the added rubber on the outsole that's going to give you a great toe off and make sure you have that extra traction you need. Let's see what Sam had to say about this shoe earlier in the year. Nice reinforced heel counter. There's a plastic um, band around here that really keeps your foot firmly in place. That's one of the stability elements of the shoe is that uh, if you're on a longer run and your form is kind of breaking down, um, that heel counter is there to make sure that you don't, um, you don't overextend your foot and you don't um, experience heel slippage. The other thing that really, really plays a great part in that is the outsole of the shoe. So um, you'll see from the outsole of the shoe that it is a wider base. And because of that, that also supports um, the, the element of not, you know, rolling your heel during a run and um, just um, keeping it more of a stable ride altogether. So again, that reinforced heel counter here and then that stable, nice outsole there. And then the, the React Foam cushioning, this is a highly, highly cushioned shoe, which makes it that great um, longer run shoe. Overall, this is a great shoe for neutral runners who need a bit of extra stability. And one of Sam's favorite things is the heel counter. This thing locks you in, especially on your later miles when your form is breaking down a bit, your foot is not gonna leave this shoe. This thing is locked on, so check it out. The Saucony Guide 13. This shoe does just that. It guides your foot with the medial post that runs through the bottom and the interior of the shoe that's gonna give you a natural gait and a perfect toe off. It provides extra arch support right in the medial post, which you're really gonna need if you're a flat-footed runner. We gave this shoe to our ambassador, Linda. Let's see what she had to say in her review. This uh, did not feel obtrusive. So just to start, if you are a neutral runner, you can run in this shoe. I don't think you find the stability off-putting. The cushion inside of the heel is really super plush. And the tongue is really very cushiony. Inside the shoe itself, the sole, it it doesn't, it's not soft like let's say memory foam, but it's really cushiony and it feels really, really good. The shoe's guidance frame is great. It provides a ton of stability for all the runners out there and it's gonna give you a smooth ride along the way. The cushion is superior. 
The Hoka One One Arahi 4. This is a perfect shoe for flat footed runners who might even have a little bit wider of a foot. The J frame technology on the bottom is awesome. It really guides your foot and gives you a ton of cushion and a ton of support on the medial post. We gave this shoe to our ambassador, Andrea. Let's see what she had to say about this shoe on her runs. I was pleasantly surprised at how comfortable this shoe was. Not only did it have an amazing upper as soon as I put this on my foot, it was so comfortable. This tongue part right here is also very soft, felt nice against my foot. Plenty of room in the toe box. I absolutely loved it. And straight out the box, I felt like I was running in an old pair of my favorite shoes. They were just that comfortable. No break in period needed at all. So my review of the Hoka Rahi 4, two thumbs up, absolutely recommend this stability shoe. If you're looking for a smooth but supportive ride, the J-Frame technology and the early stage Meta Rocker is going to give you the perfect ride to make this the perfect shoe for you. The Brooks Aerial. This is a motion control shoe that is going to give you maximum support and maximum cushion. It has really firm cushion, especially on the medial post, so your foot is not going anywhere. We gave this shoe to Ambassador Haruka, so let's kick it off to her and see what she had to say about the Brooks Aerial. This was the highest uh, cushion level shoes that I've ever owned, uh, which is easily to feel when you put your feet in these shoes. I think you can kind of see from outside it's pretty thick and also it's wide, so it, it gives your feet very good stability, which I think is neat for any easy and long run. Um, also, the toe part was pretty soft and easy fit, so even my first run, I didn't feel that firmness. It fit me perfectly. If you're someone with flat feet and you overpronate, this is going to be the perfect shoe for you. It's going to give you a max cushion ride and maximum stability. The On Cloud Flyer. If you're looking for a lightweight, innovative shoe, this is going to be perfect for you. With the Cloud Pod technology on the outsole, they've actually implemented a fork pattern that's going to give preference to the medial side to make sure you have that extra support you need if you're a flat footed runner or you tend to over pronate. Run tester Evelyn loved this shoe, so let's see what she had to say earlier in the year about the On Cloud Flyer. Uh, On has their Helion uh, technology throughout, so that's their, or their foam, I'm sorry, their super foam that's going to help keep you protected, softer landings. Uh, but it's not a plush shoe. It's still pretty firm, which I was really happy with because I've been running in a lot of plush shoes and it's missing that energy return. This is, those landings are protected even though the foam is firm and you really feel like a push of energy coming back with you. All right, for your runs that you tend to run a little bit faster, this is gonna be a great shoe for you because not only is it super lightweight, but it has a speed board in it. So it's really gonna give you a snappy, bendy feel when you're running out there. The Brooks Adrenaline GTS 21. This has been a crowd favorite of neutral and stability runners alike. It is the perfect road shoe with a ton of cushion and the guide rail technology is gonna prevent you from over pronating. Everyone who I've spoken to that's running this shoe describes the shoe as fun. I was so happy when I could actually feel, so these guide rails are pretty non-invasive, but when I my form started breaking down, I could actually feel them bringing me back oh. and aligning me with a more, secure stride, more safe stride, and that really helped my knees in the long run. So if you're someone who, you know, maybe feels some pain in your knees, ankles, feet, these guide rails are there. It's the type of shoe that wants to make you keep running miles and miles. So in 2021, you might want to check this shoe out and see what all the hype is about. The New Balance Fresh Foam 860 V11. Now this shoe is for flat footed runners who don't have flat arches, but have low to mid height arches. And as a bonus, it has fresh foam cushioning. I can say from firsthand experience, this is a luxurious cushioning that is gonna give you a perfect ride, but you don't have to be too afraid. They do have some more dense foam here in the medial post that's gonna combat the fresh foam a little bit and give you a more stable ride. Let's kick it off to Sam and see why she loved this shoe so much. I spent about 20 plus miles in this shoe as I do with all of our shoes. And the things that I noticed most is definitely this is a stability shoe. It absolutely is a stability shoe. Um, it feels very, very stable on the on the run. You know, if you have any issues with um, back and forth movement, if you kind of move like this when you're running um, and you worry about kind of that slipping side to side, you're not gonna have to worry about that in this shoe. This has a really strong medial post. Um, it really has good support structure throughout. Um, so it's a really solid stability shoe. Sam also mentioned that the heel cup of the shoe was a welcomed added addition. It really locks you down and helps give you a more comfortable ride and a natural feel. 
The Hoka One One Gaviota 2. This is a max cushion shoe with J-frame technology. That's gonna make sure you aren't squishing in too much on the super bouncy ride. Personally, I love the J-Frame technology. I know it was Evelyn's first time using the Hoka J-Frame technology, so I'm excited to see what she has to say about it. I have the Gaviota 2 here, and this is Hoka's super stable ride. So if you're looking for the most stability you can get from a Hoka shoe, this is the one for you. But the real star of the show is on the outsole. So if I flip this over, you can see along the medial side, curving down here to the lateral side, stopping right there. That's what Hoka calls their J-frame technology, which is a much firmer foam than you'll see on, say, this side of the shoe. And what that's gonna do is help you if you overpronate, um, you're gonna feel that correction, which I definitely did on the run. And if you're someone with flat feet, chances are you might overpronate, so the shoe's gonna help you out with any uh, aches or pains that you might feel from your flat feet or under or overpronation. But with the J-frame, since it goes down to here on the lateral side, if you're a mild underpronator, this will also help you. Hoka definitely takes a non-obtrusive take on stability shoes. So if you're a flat-footed runner and if you're looking for a natural ride, definitely check out the Hoka One One Gaviota 2. The Brooks Bedlam 3, a super light shoe with a ton of cushion. It's for flat-footed runners who don't overpronate a ton. The guide rail technology kicks in when you need it and kicks back when you don't. Now let's kick it off to Sydney and see what she has to say about this shoe. With a high heel and tail drop, the Brooks Bedlam 3 is great if you're looking for a shoe with a bit of stability, but not a ton. The guide rail technology is great for flat footed runners and over pronators alike because it kicks in when you need it, but takes a step back when you don't, so it's not over intrusive. If you're a runner who's looking for a bit of support in the midsole, but doesn't over pronate a lot, this is the shoe for you. For runners who are looking for a ton of support, a ton of cushion, but don't overpronate a ton, this could be the perfect shoe for you. What, what was that, Sydney? Sydney just told me that this shoe is part of the Energize collection, so it's going to be very responsive in the toe-off as well. The Mizuno Wave Inspire 16. The Inspire collection has been part of my lineup for the past three years. One reason this stays in my lineup is because of all the technology in the heel. Euphoric cushioning, euphoric X cushioning, wave plate technology, what more can you say? If you're a fan of shock absorption, then this is gonna be a great shoe for you. Let's take a look at my review from earlier in the year and see what I had to say. All right, so overall, this is great for tempo runs. This is great for long runs. I specifically use this one for long runs only because of the amount of shock absorption that it has. But one of the big takeaways is how much traction it has and so much tread. This is a shoe that's gonna last you a really long time. So if you're someone who doesn't have a ton of shoes in their rotation, or if you just need a couple to get you throughout the year, the Mizuno Wave Inspire 16 is gonna be a great option for that. Last but not least, what makes this different from the Wave Rider series? Well, the Wave Plate technology is gonna be a lot more aggressive and it's gonna come further down the forefoot to give you added stability to make sure your arches are supported. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in this far in the video. If you're interested in learning more about any of these shoes, we have links below in the description where you can check them out. And if you're a VIP, you get 90 days to try any of these shoes out. So you can try any of these shoes completely risk-free. If they don't work out for you, send it back to us and we'll find you a better shoe that fits your needs. And if you're shopping online with us, you get free shipping on all your orders. So make sure to check it out. All right, guys, leave a comment below and let us know which shoe are you looking most forward to in 2021 and beyond. Make sure you subscribe. We're coming at you every single week with more tips, tricks, and techniques from our run coaches and just our run testers on all things running. And last but not least, make sure you're out there making every mile count. See you on the road.